So, uh, the way how we generally write VMs, and especially VMs that have a native backend that, that translate into native code, they all have something that has bothered me for some decades now. And what, what is this problem? Uh, and the problem is that you essentially express the code that the machine will be executing more or less directly. That the machine text, like, like in what's in the text segment, um, when you say, well, I'm going to be executing this bytecode, you more or less translate your idea of what the bytecode does. You combine it with uh, the idea of what you think each processor instruction will do. And you kind of match these two ideas in your head. And uh, the result very often looks something like that. That is taken from the source of a VM I am sure everybody in this room experienced in, and, and it's used in production for like, I don't know how many thousands of, of machines. And um, when, when, you, when you think, well, what does this code do? Because these are just these impenetrable sequences of strange things that you don't. You are hoping for a useful comment. Maybe some human came in and uh, wrote in some, some useful explanation that will help you to untangle this thing so you can work. And what you really, <coughs> Um, what you find instead is, that, well, at least it's a useful explanation, right? That, oh, some unfound bug somewhere else, we don't know what it is, we don't have the time uh, to investigate it, but it somehow screws the, the, re the ECX register, so we'll just it reset, they reset it to zero so that we don't crash uh, um, immediately, but we crash somewhere so, so somewhere along the road, maybe after a few billion instructions are executed. Um, and uh, this is in contrast to, the, to my first software job that I had in the Skabilcin Institute for Nuclear Physics in Moscow 27 years ago. And what we did, we had this uh, customer who did medical equipment for uh, cardiovascular surgery. Uh, and uh, the people who were writing that software, it was the, the, the full stack, because they also had their own silicon and, and uh, their own technological process for... for uh, uh, they were people who did software involved with things like nuclear safety. So stuff that you cannot say, oh, well, we tested this, and it appears to work on these test vectors. No, 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 no. You, you cannot have that stuff. And then I did a lot of software, and the way how we generally write software is not like that, right? We write the instructions, and we, we sort of in our head, we use some sort of reasoning that, yeah, well, the construct probably works, and, and we, for, to demonstrate that it works, we say, yeah, well, look, it appears to work on all of these test vectors, right? Therefore, it should be good. Well, we cannot continue like that. So, what are the possible 
approaches here. I did uh, a couple of backends. One was uh, the VM for the for the small talk uh, that I uh, showed in the demo yesterday. The, the first approach, and, and I actually here in Argentina, what three four years ago it was. Three, three years ago, I, I showed it in a more uh, rough state, and now it it actually does work. Uh, so the idea is that uh, you never ever uh, just directly construct the code that will be uh, that will be doing the information processing yourself. Uh, <coughs> you need to be able to reason about the reasoning. So you have to calculate the actual argument. And one of uh, the, the actual argument why you think that the construct works. This is an idea by David Hilbert that the proof of the theorem is the actual mathematical objects that, that, that you are dealing with. So the first approach was that you infer the back end. And I'm not going to go into too much detail, otherwise we will be really out of time. Uh, but uh, the idea is that you take the description of a processor. So this is some sort of processor description language. You inject it into some uh, form from which you infer uh, the actual code generator. So this is, it, it, and you do that. Uh, by unification, so, so here is some, some sort of unification um, algorithm. So you have a parameterized forms of instruction, and basically these are your CGN-like or you know, what, what have you, but this is particular to the processor, but you never actually deal uh, manually reasoning about the, uh, the, the particular sequence of instructions uh, itself. And uh, this is kind of interesting, uh, but uh, the question I was thinking about this, I mean, it's, it's, it's better uh, than what we had on the previous slide. And yet, it's just you are instructing the machine what to do. It's just another level of indirection. But it's still, you're just writing a program, although sort of at a higher level. So when I had, when I had that working, I said, now I am really going to do it the way how we did that medical equipment back at Skabilcin. There were people not happy about it because, well, this is not how people wrote, historically wrote small talk VMs. But I said, shut up. Uh, I am sick and tired of lying about who I really am and how I want the small talk VM to be. Uh, and. Uh, about the, the, this idea that I've had for like 20 some years uh, that small talk needs to be capable of serving that class of computing, of computing programs. So the other approach is with formal proof. So what you, what you have is uh, you have You, you can actually have it in two forms. Uh, you have a, some sort of translator that takes source and transforms it into some sort of target. And uh, you can do static analysis of this and produce a proof that, so let, let's, that, that, that would be something, something compiler, right? So you produce a proof that for all, uh, for all S, 
if the compiler uh, uh, if the compiler acting on S produces T, then the behavior of the compiled um, result is the same as the supposed behavior of the source. And this is called verified. This is a verified compiler. It's another approach. So it's the same thing, right? But instead of, uh, in, instead of uh, proving that if it produces any code at all, then the code is correct for any S, for which it produces a T, um, you, you, you don't do this generalization. What you do is uh, you start with S, and you compile it into two things. T and a proof that what you produced is correct. So these two things, they're really equivalent uh, module or introduction rule for, uh, for the all quantifier. How does it, how does it work in practice? Uh, I took CompCert, it's uh, uh, this verified C compiler for which uh, source code is available under the GPL. And I took uh, last several stages of the intermediate representation. And I took small talk byte codes and wrote a verified pass which um, transforms the small talk byte codes into their intermediate representation. And they're very, very close, the array R and, and the small talk uh, byte codes. And this is uh, basically the, the idea. Uh, I would like to give you a little bit of a flavor of what it really means uh, uh, to have an automatic proof of a statement, because a lot of people uh, have just no idea. Uh, and uh, we will start with very, very simple example. Uh, obviously, we will not prove a compiler, because that something is way too complex or not even anything really useful about quantities that we deal with, 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 with in computers. Uh, but to illustrate just the idea of how we do automatic proving, uh, I will prove a tautology from pure logic um, computation. So the proof is that for all x, uh, for all x uh, which is a proposition, and for all y, which is a proposition, uh, if x and y is true, then y and x is also true. So, how do we prove it? Well, we're going to we're going to go into the same environment that I used for making the verified VM. And um, I don't know why this is, uh, but let's say well, something. But we give it. OK. So this is Emacs with uh, COC mode enabled. COC is something between an automatic theorem prover and a proof checker. It has some qualities in the middle between the two. Can so, you speak the mic? Uh, I, I can speak more clearly. Sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it, uh, yes, um, it, it is uh, this uh, interactive theorem proving uh, system, which is somewhere in between an automatic theorem prover and just a proof checker. And we're going to write this uh, theorem uh, um, commutativity of uh, conjunction. Right, so for all x and y in prop x and y will imply y and x. Now I am now in uh, cock mode, so I can go next, right? So here I am now in interactive proving mode. So I have one goal that I have to prove, and that goal is that. So the first thing I, I need to do is I need to explain uh, to the system what it means uh, this, the semantics of this. And for this, we will be using uh, the conjunction introduction rule, which says that, well, the meaning of this symbol is that if I believe this to be true, it means that I believe this to be true, and I believe also this to be true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, yeah, split. And uh, now I have, um, no, actually I need introduction first, yes. Uh, introduction. So now uh, X and Y is assumed, right? I believe that my premise is correct. Then my goal is to prove this. And now I split what I just explained. Split. Split. And I go next, like compile next. So now I have two sub goals, right? I have to prove Y and I have to prove X. Well, how do I prove this? Well, very, very, uh, very, very easy. I have a hypothesis that says both X and Y are, are true. Now I destruct it into two separate hypotheses. So I say destruct. Uh, y. The, does it work? Okay, it was not smart enough to see that there is only one hypothesis. So I have two hypotheses now. I know not just that X and Y is, is true. I know that X is true, and I also know separately that Y is true. So, and I have to prove X. So I apply hypothesis H, which is X is true. So I go, Apply H. And now, mm, no, uh, uh, zero, because I'm trying to prove Y instead. So this. So now, I had two sub-goals. Now I have only one sub-goal. I have to prove X, right? I just proved Y. I have to prove X. Well, what do I do? I distract, uh, I distract H into two sub-hypotheses. Destruct H again. And now, again, I have two hypotheses, X and Y, and they are both uh, the premises. They are uh, uh, above that, that double line. And I just say apply H. Uh, apply H. 
right. No more sub goals. We're done. Well, to say QED and what that uh, does is it binds the body of the proof to the variable comconj. So now in our, well, small talk dictionary, we have a variable of, with that name and what it refers to is the actual proof term. So if we n, we say, ah, yes, this is now a defined variable. What can we do with it? Well, we can type check it. For example, check com conj. And its type is the actual statement of the theorem. So the body, the, the proof, is a member of the statement. What does it look like? The actual value of the variable. So print com conj. And this <coughs> is the actual proof. So what is it? It's a function that takes a proof of this. And it returns a proof of this. Now, what does it look like to you? So, so what do we do? We, we have x and y, and uh, we're, we're done, right? And that is a function, uh, given that, uh, so, so the, whole, the whole proof is a, fu is a function that given x and y gives a function, right? We were talking about curing at the beginning of this conference. It's a function, again, that will take x and y, which is really just a cons of the two. And you see, it takes h and uh, it takes the left, and then it takes the right of it, and then it transposes it and makes them into another pair, but reversed. So what is this in small talk? Can anybody try to write this in small talk? So this is essentially, this is point transpose, point method transpose. And it, simply returns y at x. This is, this is the whole proof. What we don't have in small talk is a declaration what it should be. If it had a type that is a constraint that this always returns the same point with the things reversed, and we would type check somehow, then, we would, then, then the method signature would be the theorem and the body would be the proof. So, uh, why is this even interesting? And uh, I had uh, uh, some counter arguments that, oh, but this is academic because this is, nobody's gonna follow this. Well, the, the, then, then I am sort of sad for, for us because uh, 
a lot of competition are doing this. Uh, very, very aggressively. There's many languages that are growing, that are uh, using this approach. Many companies uh, are investing into this. And uh, in today's world, uh, where security is getting more important, where software itself is getting from just, you know, well, uh, if, if something happens, we'll just fix the bug and restart. Uh, we, we can just, we just cannot have that. And uh, we need to thank this guy who gave us all of the, mathematicals, uh, all of the mathematical tools that we need to construct provably correct software in his dissertation back in 1907. So in this November, we celebrate 110 years of his dissertation. Thank you and see you next year at the conference. It must be uh, Boris, can't can be anyone else. There's nobody like him. It's easy to, to verify. Questions? I have a question. Yes. How does one manage the complexity that there is to prove a system that allows mobility as it is and any small of system? Yeah. How does one prove something that can be taken that has some variables? Well, uh, actually, we design how the things are from the end to not allow this and is the proof or how to do this? Well, actually, uh, there are um, there are certain difficulty that there are certain difficulties that arise uh, out of uh, things like uh, uh, the fact that, for example, the class, all of these things in it are just simply instance variables, and you can you you, you can. Uh, but uh, realistically, proving something in such a simple engine as the, as the Smalltalk VM is, is really simpler than proving a kind of mess that a C compiler is, where you can uh, screw over all things and, and uh, the experimental implementation that I have is taking parts of CompCert. And CompCert is a proven C compiler. So uh, this is much, much, much simpler. What is, uh, so you mentioned uh, uh, this time and many other, uh, many other talks that uh, the, uh, there are Description of languages for the processors. Yes. The name, the, uh, description. PDLs. PDLs. Yeah, PDLs. Processor description. Yes. So, uh, before trying to prove everything, uh, we could prove that, I don't know, the, uh, we, I think we need uh, a, a, a description, a processor description language for the bike. Well, yes, this is, the, this, is what, uh, this is what this does. Because 
this is, this is orthogonal to the other approach, where you concentrate on abstracting the complexities of the processor. In this approach, you're, I am simply reusing what Leroy had already done uh, in Comsert. Uh, he already proves, he, he already has a model, a formal model of semantics of each instruction for a bunch of processors. For ARM, for okay, PowerPC, for x86. Uh, yes. Uh, processor encryption language for small titles. Mm -hmm. Well, we simply say that here are the definitions of each bytecode. This is what it does. Yeah. And then we do uh, a transformation for each, for, from each bytecode to there. And then for each bytecode, we have the transformation, but also to each bytecode, there is a theorem that says, oh, this transformation into the intermediate language of CompCert is correct. Because what happens is that there is a formal description. So, so you have a transformation, right? So you have IR forms, IR1, IR2, IR3, until you reach the machine code, right? And this is source. So at every stage here, you have a formal definition of semantics of these guys and a formal definition of semantics of these guys. And then you have the transformation function. So what you do uh, is you take this and you take this and you take this and you prove that the theorem states that this transformation preserve the semantics. Mm -hmm. So what I do, of course you need, let's say this is by small talk byte codes. And I only have one very, very simple transformation into one of the AR, uh, one of the IR forms of CompCert. So, so from here, this is all CompCert now. And, this is, uh, and, and from here, this is all just regular small talk. And VLS, what, what I call my stuff, is just this, right?